All right, we just finished our cloud creature assignment where we took our fantasy creature, which is composited from at least five different resources um, and based on our own vision, maybe a version of a Pokemon. And then we were trying to use, again, other people's pixels, but this time just photos of clouds and use them to make our own shape and image. And we painted our own background. Now we're going to, to finish up our culmination of compositing where we're using other people's pixels but are also allowed to add our own is that we have to, we're required to use one of our previous assignments or exercises in an animation. And that animation needs to not just be something that moves, that's one type of animation, it's called movement test, it needs to be a scene where a transformation occurs. So something has to change from beginning, middle to end in our animation. So here's an example of a storyboard. This student wanted to use their landscape setting, their fantasy landscape, and they wanted to use their creature. They're only required to use one previous assignment, but they decided to use the two together, which is what I'll demo. It's a fun thing to do. And then they have to decide, well, how are these two things going to come together? How is my creature going to interact with my landscape? And it's different than your creature scape, right? Because now movement and time passing is a big part of the art. So they said, in this storyboard, they only did it in eight panels. I'm going to want you to do a nine panel storyboard. It just kind of works the best, and I'll show you. But in eight panels, they showed the creature kind of coming from the ocean, shooting laser beams out of its eyes. So what's the transformation? The transformation is that this little city or this tower gets set on fire, right? And then the creature is really happy, starts laughing, and maniacally goes back into the water. So a pretty simple scene, right? What is a scene? A scene has a setting, a time and place, and it has some sort of character action in that setting. So this is what we call the refined storyboard. So if you're trying to show animation in a traditional portfolio, you show a storyboard sketch, you show a refined storyboard, which takes screen grabs from your animation and tells the story like a comic book. And you can see in nine panels, it shows exactly what her initial storyboard showed. The creature comes from the water, the eyes start glowing, you don't really see the laser beams here, but then the, the town gets set on fire and it starts laughing and going back into the water. But where it really works is when we get to see movement. Right? And even though it's a GIF animation, it can be jittery, it's made for online play, it tells the story clearly and it, it holds up to repeat viewing. So we're looking at an animation sequence that's gonna be no longer than like four or five seconds. But we want it to show a full transformation. Other examples, this one just uses the fantasy landscape and then makes some pretty big changes. It basically shows a missile shoot, like we're looking right on as the missile hits and then it explodes everything. That's a pretty strong transformation. Right? And of course, lots of compositing with those different explosions building up on each other. Uh, notice how this one does this nice thing of what I call setting to reset. So at the end, it has a way of getting back to the first frame that makes sense by having this television screen go out. Here's one that just uses the character. So that one just used the landscape. This one just uses the character using puppet warp and then using a lot of their own kind of painting with the texture. They transform their creature, right? And then they just run the animation backwards in order to get it to set to reset. So there's lots of ways you can play with this. Some of them are serious. Some of them are sillier. So this does a lot of um, drawing your own pixels to do some nice kind of frame by frame animation at the beginning here of the creature as a shadow coming down from the sky and then emerging as, as the full assignment too. And then kind of glowing and then the fire, which looks a little hand painted, but it's nicely stylized, taking over everything. Fire's fun in animation. Walt Disney learned that with the Snow White and the magic mirror and all the flames. It's just a lot of fun to animate. I look at that a lot. Look up Snow White Magic Mirror animation as a GIF. Beautiful, beautiful. Here's another one that uses mostly the creature and just puts it on a flat background. But I love how direct it is and how you can add new elements like the little party hat. It can be really arbitrary. This one's pretty epic. 
And this one uses the character and the fantasy setting, but then also makes really good use of frame speed. And that's tough to do, but we'll learn how you can do that. Where some frames go slower, some go faster, and elements are at different speeds within the frames. So it makes the island floating nicely, but then the creature is moving pretty fast. And I like how the eye bulges. I think I might steal that for my demo this semester. So when it gets hit by this light arrow, the eye just kind of cartoonishly bulges. <laughs> the little things. Animation's fun. So on and on and on. You'll see lots of details. How do we have to start? We have to start with a storyboard sketch. And you want to kind of start with inspiration. We're going to draw our storyboard sketch in nine square panels, right? So three on three. You don't want any story that's more ambitious than what you can show in a comic book of three panels all in one setting, right? We don't want to be jumping between different scenes, like from the barn to the mountaintop to the castle in this short animation. It's just not going to serve the, the audience well. And the transformation could be something very simple. So this just does a nice panning shot to kind of get us interested because the transformation is so simple, just the growing of those antlers, right? But it works. And this one does the whole scene and is a pretty extreme transformation where just everything catches on fire. But all that smoke then allows it to set to reset. And I might steal that idea from my demo. <laughs> I've already drawn my idea and I realize yeah, you know, a lot of it has stuff in common. So those are the past student examples. How do we actually start? Well, you might look at some GIF animations. So if you look at images online and you type animation, you can actually sort with tools for type. And we want GIFs. Now, it's not that all GIF files or GIF files, however you want to pronounce it, are animated, but most are, right? Because it is a very early image format. It stands for graphic interchange format. And it takes, it only allows for a maximum of 256 pixels in color, right? So the color is very limited, but that allows for it to be so memory efficient that you can put animation scripts onto it. So we're not just seeing an image, we're seeing a whole slideshow of images played very quickly. Now, one of my great inspirations for animation that's like this, kind of in the short form, is Terry Gilliam. He was the lone American for Monty Python. And he's gone on to be a great film director, but he would do all of these kind of animated sequences, mostly with collage cutouts. Some of them are just hilarious. And they're all kind of, they're all stop motion with just cutouts. So it's very much like how we'll be learning frame by frame animation in Photoshop. And notice you want a transformation. So this is a great example. Here the character transforms from not being beat up to being beat up. You know, little things. We can also uh, play with our elements and you can use your, your uh, cartoon jumble for this. You can use your shape compositions for this. Any past assignment is allowed as long as you showcase a transformation of some form. So we don't want it to be just like this, just a movement test. We want something to change so this is how I want you to sketch. I want you to think, um, what elements do I want to use, right? You have to use at least one assignment or one exercise from before. I am going to use my landscape and my creature, just so I can show you all that complexity. We've already played with that a little bit with our creature scape with assignment three. So I'm trying to turn on FaceTime here so I can take a photo of my sketch so I can walk you through it. And this is where I want you to be at the beginning of next class, where you have a storyboard, you have a plan. And then we're going to start building our keyframes from it. Come on, FaceTime. There we go. So here's my sketch. Just a reminder, it's good to put this in video. Notice that it's a mirror image. So I'm going to hit Command-Shift-4 on a Mac to do a targeted screen grab. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Select it all, let go. It's going to put that screen grab up onto my desktop as a PNG. And then I need to open it in preview and flip it horizontally so it's no longer a mirror image because I want to be able to read what I wrote. 
in the past, I've sketched this digitally, so I have it all captured, but it's so much easier just to sketch it by hand and make little revisions and notes because you're planning out your story. So let me walk you through it. So here in preview, I can go to tools and I can flip it horizontally so it's no longer a mirror image. Now you can read my writing. I can also go to adjust color and I can say auto levels. That makes it a little bit easier to read. I can sharpen it because I'm in low light when I got this screen grab and that helps me see everything. So this is the first thing I will submit for this assignment, right? Is my initial storyboard. And what you want in your nine panels, three on three, is the first three show the beginning of your story. This might seem obvious, but it's important. The middle three show your middle of your story. And the in three should show the end. So what you have is a transformation happening from beginning, middle to end. It's not something you sneak in, in the last two frames, right? And eyes closing and opening or um, mouths opening and shutting or a character walking around, those aren't transformations, right? Those are just movements. So we want something more than just a movement test. You can write lots of things underneath, lots of little notes underneath each keyframe. So right here, I have establish X and setting. So I'll usually just call my character X until I have a name for it. So in your first panel, you need to establish what your character is usually. Or you can do what's called a, a late or a delayed establishing, where you show a setting and then your character is revealed, right? It's hidden or you zoom into it or something. Um, when you do plan on zooming, I want to zoom in closer to my character, right? So I have a little arrow and I'm going to say zoom in. And so each of these frames represents, or each of these storyboard sketches represents more than just two frames of animation. There's going to be steps in between these to get from here to here. And then I start to have X eat the plant, right? So here, um, character X is moving forward and gently moves. Here it starts eating the, the coral. And then in the middle, it eats more and I'm, I'm zoomed in. And then its eyes start to bulge. And then I zoom out or I pan out and the eyes turn red. So we have beginning of a transformation, right? It's changing. The eyes are bulging, they're turning red. Then the eyes are gonna squint and close and the body's gonna tense and I'm zoomed out here and it's gonna breathe fire. So in large, the big story is in the beginning it eats, in the middle its eyes turn red and in the end it breathes fire. And it'll be fun to kind of animate between these things. So the eyes squint and close, the body tenses. Here it breathes torrents and torrents of fire, right? Making the, the coral kind of a silhouette of black. And then eventually all is consumed in smoke and soot. And the, the creature turns black, right? But that also allows me to let the smoke eventually clear and reveal the first frame. So that's a set to reset. So that's the way I'm thinking about it. And I want you to be able to do it all in nine panels. It doesn't matter so much if I can tell what you're drawing. It matters a lot if you can tell what you're drawing right? and what it means. So this is a way to help you think it through. And you might need to come up with a few scenarios before you settle on one that really works. Now, you also want to think what elements do you already have that you're using? So I already have my creature. I already have my setting. And luckily, I have them as PSD files. So for my setting, especially, I have the coral separate as a layer from the background so I can animate it separately. I can make it have chunks taken away from it. I have my character as a as a, a shape that I can puppet warp. And if I need to, I can make the mouth move up and down. I can bulge the eyes. I can use you know other elements on top of it, though I might need to create some new ones. The fire and the red eyes, all of that's new. So those are new elements I'll be bringing in that I haven't created yet. So you are allowed to to draw them, you are allowed to composite them, you are allowed to do whatever you want. All right, so how do I start? I'm gonna start by making sure I have the components I need for my keyframes, right? So just to show you what keyframes are, I found some examples from uh, Hitchcock, who was like a really master storyteller with his storyboards. And his final film matches his storyboards just exactly. So I'll start the next video showing you some of those and then how we're going to try to recreate some of our, our storyboard keyframes.